Hey guys, this is our third week of Sunday School and we are going to continue reading in John chapter 1 starting in verse 40. And we're going to read um, two sections in this Bible about uh, when Jesus is calling the first disciples. And let's say a little prayer. Dear Jesus, we thank you for this time that we get to spend looking into the scriptures that you gave us. And we pray that you would give me the words to say and give whoever's listening an open heart and an open mind to understand your truth. In your name we pray. Amen. So, chap, John chapter 1, verse 40. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two disciples who heard what John said and followed Jesus. So if you remember last time, our, some of the disciples that were following John turned and followed Jesus. So this is where we are in our book. He first found his own brother, Simon. That's Andrew. He found his brother, Simon, and told him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. Andrew brought Simon to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. On the next day, Jesus wanted to set out for Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, <laughs> the town of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and the prophets also wrote about, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael replied, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip replied, come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and exclaimed, look, a true Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, how do you know me? Jesus replied, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus said to him, Because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. He continued, I tell all of you the solemn truth. You will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. So if we look in this book, we have when John shouted out, look, the Lamb of God, right? So there he was walking by. And when the two asked, Rabbi, where are you staying? And he said, come and see. And there they are. And here's Andrew and Simon Peter. Here they are again. So this is when Jesus is starting his ministry. He's starting to preach to people and tell them about all the things that God had sent him to tell everyone. And he had disciples because he knew that he would only be here for a short time. So he found people who were willing to listen to him, who had open minds and who learned what he was teaching and could go on and teach other people as well. So these are some of the first disciples. Andrew was the very first one who was called. And then we have the one that we typically think of as Peter. We don't usually think of him as Simon. Uh, Jesus liked to give nicknames to some of his friends, so he renamed Simon and called him Cephas or Peter. Jesus hadn't performed any miracles yet, 
but these guys knew that there was something different about him than about other teachers. And I believe that God helped open their eyes and they saw something special in him. That's what God looks for is a willing heart and an opened mind. If you think you're too smart for God, then there's not really anything he can do for you. You have to recognize that you're not perfect, that it's not about how smart you are. It's about the fact that he made you and he has a purpose for every single person that he's created. And he looks for you to look to him to find out what that purpose is. And these guys were willing to find out what God, what Jesus saw as their purpose to learn from him what it is that he was teaching. I find it funny that Nazareth had a reputation of not being the best place to live which I think in one way is God's way of saying it doesn't matter where you live. That's not what makes you special to me. It's not because you have a certain amount of money and live in a certain kind of home. You are special to me because I created you. And Jesus was special not only because God created him, but because he was without sin. And he was only able to live a life without sin because he was fully God and because he was fully human, he was able to understand what we go through. See you next week.